Hello and welcome back to Chapter 7 on Sampling Distributions. Uh, today we're going to be looking at Section 7.2 uh, in the entirety of this video. And we'll be looking at sample proportions, our P hats. So in this section, uh, in this video, we're going to look at how to find the mean and the standard deviation of a sampling distribution of a sample proportion. In other words, we're going to be looking at finding the mean of the P hat and the standard deviation of the P hat. In order to do so, we're going to have to check that 10% condition. In other words, that 10 times our sample size is still less than or equal to our population before doing any of the calculating on the standard deviation of sample proportions. Uh, that is a necessity. Uh, so uh, the other thing we'll do is determine that the sampling distribution of a sample proportion is approximately normal. So then we can use the normal curves. Uh, and if appropriate, use the normal distribution to calculate probabilities involving a sample proportion. In other words, we're going to have to look at, if it's appropriate, we're going to have to look at conditions for using that. So let's look at the sampling distribution of p hat. So how good is that statistic p hat as an estimate of the parameter p? Uh, so the sampling distribution of p hat answers this question. So in other words, if we take many, many, many samples, many, many, many samples, and find the p hat of each one of those, and then look at the distribution of all of those p hats from several samples. Uh, we'll look and see how well that does estimate our p. So as an example, consider the approximate sampling distribution generated by a simulation in which simple random samples of Reese's pieces are drawn from a population whose proportion of orange candies is either 0.45 or 0.15. So we're going to look at 0.45 first. So we're going to uh, with the po population proportion of orange candies is 0.45 on our sample. And we're going to look at the shape, center, and spread of each distribution. So right here, we look at uh, our sample size is 25. And we're going to take 400, 400 samples uh, where our uh, known population uh, proportion is 0.45. And this was a computer-generated result. And... Uh, we saw that uh, our p hat here uh, would be 0.48. Okay, so close, close to our true population uh, parameter, our true population p. Okay, let's do it again. And here what we did is we took a sample size of 50. So instead of 25, our sample size is 50. So we took a little larger sample size. Still took the same number of samples. We had 400 people do this. Uh, with a known population parameter of 0.45, a population P of 0.5. Um, and here we see that the computer generation gave us a P at a 0.46, so a little bit closer. So kind of analyze these shapes a little bit. I think both of these sort of look approximately uh, normal. There certainly is, looks approximately symmetric. Uh, the center of these is pretty darn close to where it should be. Uh, if we look at this one, uh, you know, maybe a little bit higher than what it should be. This one here, you know, maybe just a little bit higher than what it should be, but pretty darn close to where uh, where it should be. So let's look at it, uh, uh, do a this little sample uh, 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 simulation where the true population proportion is actually 0.15. So we'll take a, look, take a look here again. We took a sample size of 25. So we're taking 25 Reese's Pieces. We had 400 people do that and looked at the proportion um, of orange candies. Uh, this one happened to be 0.24. Okay, so a little bit off of what, what it should be here. So we have a little bit of variability in there. Uh, but if we do it again and just increase our sample size, uh, we can see we get a little bit closer to that true population parameter, that, that true uh, population proportion. Her p hat gets to be better to, as an estimate of our true population proportion. So, what do we notice? Well, in a shape, in some cases, the sampling distribution of p hat can be approximated by a normal curve. Uh, this seems to depend on both the sample size and the population proportion. So in other words, what we're kind of looking at is if we have a larger sample size, we tend to get closer and closer to that uh, true value. Our center, that mean of the distribution, the mean of our p hats, 
was pretty darn close to that P. In fact, if we took all possible samples, it should be. It should be exactly the same as that. Uh, and this makes sense because the sample portion P hat is an unbiased estimator of P. And then for our spread, for a specific value of, uh, of our proportion, the standard deviation of our sample, the standard deviation of all of our samples, of the sample distribution, gets smaller as n gets larger. So in other words, the more, the larger our sample size gets, the, the smaller the, the spread gets in our distribution. So again, so this value of uh, the standard deviation of our p hats, the standard deviation of all of our sample uh, p hats, depends both on uh, the sample size and the population proportion. So there's an important connection between the sample portion p hat and the number of successes x in the sample. So in other words, how we calculate p hat is simply the count of successes in the sample out of the sample size, like back in the uh, previous video with the blue and red chips. If we're looking for red chips, that's the count of success in the sample. We're looking for the number of red chips out of the total. So p hat is simply just x, the count of success in the sample, divided by the size of the sample. Well, in chapter 6, we learned that the mean and standard deviation of a binomial random variable are the following. So the mean uh, of uh, the random variable in a binomial distribution is just n times p. And the standard deviation of the random variable in a binomial situation was the square root of n times p times q. Now remember, uh, the q, we, uh, the book previously has written it as 1 minus p. Uh, we're just shortening that up so it's just q, so we have less to write. Well, let's do a little algebra. Since p hat is x, the random variable divided by n, the number of successes uh, divided by n, we could rewrite that mathematically as 1 over n times x. Well, that just means we're just multiplying the random variable x. We're multiplying this random variable x by 1 over n. So if I want to find the mean of my p hats, all I got to do is take 1 times n times this n times p because if we multiply every variable, every uh, random variable by a certain number, we can just multiply that mean by that. And a little simple mathematics here has those n's crossing off, so the mean of our p hat is simply just p. It's an unbiased estimator of p. Our standard deviation, again, if we multiply every value in the standard deviation by a certain value, in this case we're going to multiply it by 1 over n, we just have to multiply uh, the standard deviation by 1 over n, and that's what we're doing down here. A little algebra to get this back inside, we'd have to square it to bring it back inside. Uh, then we could cancel one of these ends here with one of those ends, and I just had the square root of pq all over n for our standard deviation. And what we would notice here is as our sample size increases, as this n value increases, we're dividing by a bigger and bigger number, so that would actually decrease this overall value, decrease this overall spread. So, just to kind of sum up some of the things here with sampling distribution of a sample proportion, if you choose an SRS of size n, so any size from the population of size capital N, with proportion p of success is given, let p hat be the sample proportion of successes, then what we need to know is the mean of the sampling distribution of p hat is the following. The mean of the p hats is simply p. So there's one of the formulas we've got to know to calculate the mean of a sample proportion. The mean of all the, the distribution of all the sample proportions is simply just p. The standard deviation of the sampling distribution of p hat is the following here. So the standard deviation of all of our uh, uh, p hats, uh, the standard deviation of our sampling distribution is the square root of p times q all over n. And that's, again, our population proportion uh, of successes, of failures, divided by our sample size. And this works as long as the 10% condition is satisfied. So we have to make sure that we satisfy that first. Uh, if it's not satisfied, if it is not satisfied, we can't calculate standard deviation as independence has not been established. So, again, we're looking at that these sample sizes are so small that 
any change, any difference in that is really negligible uh, in terms of the uh, the, the, pop uh, the, the probability uh, between each of the different samples. So also, as our n increases, uh, we noticed in those pictures before that as our sample size increases, the sampling distribution becomes approximately normal, becomes closer and closer to normal. But before you perform normal calculations, check that the normal condition is satisfied. So in order to really uh, show that this, as that n size increases, that we get closer and closer to that normal distribution, uh, that really only happens when our n times our p and both our n q, n times q, are both greater than or equal to 10. If that is true, then we can assume normality and then use the normal distribution to calculate probabilities. Uh, if it's not, we can't, we can't do that because we haven't established normality then at that point. So again, what we have, there's out in the world there, there's some population proportion of success. So people come out and they do a simple random sample from this population and they'll get a p hat. Somebody else will do it and they'll get their p hat. Somebody else will get their p hat. And if you take and plot all of these, all of these p hats into a sampling distribution of the p hat, that mean, that mean should be an unbiased estimator. The mean of all the p hats should be the, uh, the mean p value. Uh, their mean should be p. Our standard deviation uh, would be the p, and here they're using 1 minus p again, but we can use that as q, so uh, square root of p times q all over n would be our standard deviation uh, for our sampling distribution of p hat. So there we go. In this section, that's what we learned. We talked about the mean and the standard deviation of a sampling distribution. We got those two new formulas. Uh, remember to check that 10% condition, that 10 times our sample size is less than or equal to our population. Uh, determine if the sampling distribution of the sample portion is approximately normal. Uh, and again, make sure that we uh, you know, can use it when it's appropriate, that our n times the p and the n times our q are both greater than or equal to 10. And if so, then we can use a normal distribution to calculate probabilities involving a sample proportion. So at this point, you should be able to do these problems down here for section 7.2. Again, I wish you good skill, and we'll see you in the next video.